Hello, everybody. Thank y'all very much for tuning in. Today, I am going to be talking about the Jehovah's Witness and disfellowshipping and disassociation. Now, I'm going to show. I'm going to share a brief video uh, of this Jehovah's Witness. His name is Mr. Sorenko. And he's going to share with us 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11, which the scripture shows if any Jehovah's Witness get involved with these bad sins, they can be disfellowship from the Jehovah's Witness organization. And when they are disfellowship, that means Jehovah's Witnesses are no longer allowed to communicate with that person. It can be a family member. It can be a friend. They are not allowed to communicate with that person because they indulge in wrongdoings. That's highlighted there in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. So I'm going to share that video with you. But this is the question right here. Let's say that a Jehovah's Witness did not indulge in any of those bad things. Sexual immorality, getting drunk, and just living a wild life. Let's say they didn't get involved with those things. But they just wanted to leave the organization. In other words, they no longer wanted to be identified as a Jehovah's Witness. They're still a good person. They're, stu they're still doing the right thing, but they just don't want to practice the Jehovah's Witness way. They just no longer want to follow the governing body in the way they do things. Now, if a person resigned as being a Jehovah's Witness, will they be shunned by the faithful members? Now, let's just say the faithful members are relatives and friends. Will they be shunned by them? Not that they did anything wrong. Not that they committed immorality. Got involved with sexual things. They just no longer want to be identified as a Jehovah's Witness. Perhaps they want to join another religion. Perhaps they just want to be atheist or agnostic. Will they be shunned by the faithful members, even if it's a family member or a friend? We're going to answer that from their own literature. But first, let's listen to Mr. Sorenko as he outlines how a person can be disfellowship, why they can be disfellowship, and what the faithful members must do that is shun them when they are disfellowship. So we're going to listen to him. I'm going to come back and then I'm going to answer that question. Check him out. Well, let's talk about the disfellowshipping arrangement. To begin, it would be good to read the scriptural basis for disfellowshipping. It is found at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. So if you would like to open your Bibles there, we will start reading with verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 5. It says, and this is the Apostle Paul writing under inspiration. In my letter, I wrote you to stop keeping company with sexually immoral people, not meaning entirely with the sexually immoral people of this world or the greedy people or extortioners or idolaters. Otherwise, you would actually have to get out of the world. Well, Christians do not hold themselves aloof from non-witnesses. We have normal contacts with neighbors, workmates, schoolmates, and others, and we witness to them, even if some of them are living immoral lives. We cannot avoid them completely. It is different, though, with a brother who lives like that. Verse 11 continues, But now I am writing you to stop keeping company with anyone called a brother who is sexually immoral, or a greedy person, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even eating with such a man. And so at the end of verse 13, he adds, Remove the wicked person from among yourselves. Notice that this inspired instruction is worded as a command, not a suggestion. 
So what is the very best thing we can do for those who are disfellowshipped? We already read it in 1 Corinthians 5.11. Stop keeping company with them, not even eating with them. And speaking of the same sort of person, the Apostle John wrote it, 2 John 10, do not receive him into your homes or say a greeting to him. Okay, so you heard him right. Not even eating with such a man, not even having him in your home. But before I read this article, which I have here, before I read this article, there's something I need to explain in regards to what Mr. Serenko, what he highlighted here. Now, so Mr. Serenko said, now he's a Jehovah's Witness. He represents the governing body. Now, this is what he said. Jehovah's Witnesses can have normal communication with immoral people. But a Jehovah's Witness or a brother who is practicing the same thing that these immoral people are practicing, they can't they can associate with him. They, they can't have any communication with him or her. So let me paint this picture for you to show how this is a cult and they are very, very dangerous. And that they use mind control that is very serious. Let me break this down. So, let's say you have a workmate. And we're going to call him John. Now, if your name is John, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about you personally. But let's say you got a workmate whose name is John. Let's say John was an immoral individual. But yet, let's say you ate with John every day. You witnessed to John. You, you talk with John and he talked about his family. He shared with you his, his vacations and the things that they're doing. Now, you're laughing with John at lunch on a daily day basis. Okay, so, so you know John real well. You're talking with him. And you have no problem in communicating with John. Now, let's say John starts studying. And he becomes a Jehovah's Witness. Now, John is your brother. John is your brother. Now, now, now remember, Mr. Serenko said it's okay to be communicating, have contact with and more people. So, but now John has become your brother. And you're still having contact and communication with him. Now, let's say John gets this fellowship. And he's no longer a Jehovah's Witness. Because he committed one of those sins there in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. When you see John now at work, you are no longer able to sit down and eat with John at lunch. You are no longer able to have a meal with John. You see how mind control, indoctrination, you see what that has done to that Jehovah's Witness brain? Now he's looking at John as a... That's why these teachings are so dangerous. He no longer sees John as a regular human being that he can just communicate with. Now he's seeing John as a bad witness, as a disfellowship bad witness, and he can't even sit down and have a meal with John anymore. That's how dangerous this teaching of disfellowshipping really is. I just had to get that out. So now, the question is, if you just want to leave the organization, no longer want to be a Jehovah's Witness, Will you be shunned, even though you have not done those bad things that is highlighted in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11? Well, I'm going to pull up this article. And you can see the article there. And it's Enjoy Life Forever, an interactive Bible course, page 241 and 242. Now, this is taken from the Jehovah's Witness publication. And this is what they have to say about that question. It says, what if someone we know has decided that he no longer wants to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses? 
It can be heartbreaking when someone close to us does this. That person may force us to choose between him and Jehovah. We must be determined to remain loyal to God above all else. So we obey Jehovah's command not to associate with such individuals. So if a person decides, hey, I don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. I'm not committing any sins. I just don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. Right away, you notice what the governing body, you notice what they did? You notice, notice how they very manipulative. Now you must choose Jehovah or that person to associate with Jehovah or associate with that person. And that should not be the case. That should not be the case. But you see the answer right here? The answer is, if a person no longer want to be a Jehovah's Witness, that last sentence says, we obey Jehovah's command not to associate with such individuals. So you cannot even walk away from the organization without being punished, without being shunned for the rest of your life. And that can be by your family members. Just because you do not want to be identified as a Jehovah's Witness. The governing body said you got to choose right now. If your relative or your friend don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness, you must choose. Why, they, why did they put that before a Jehovah's Witness? You must choose. See, right there. They're telling you, you must reject your family member and your friends if they even just walk away from the organization. And they, they don't want to be identified as a Jehovah's Witness. Now, I'm going to conclude with a scripture, Proverbs chapter 2. I'm going to read 10 and 11. And 10, 11, 12, and then verses 15. It says, for wisdom will come into your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech, men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. In order to see how devious this uh, disassociation is this policy by the governing body a person must have wisdom discretion understanding knowledge and as long as Jehovah's Witnesses continue to only read the information from JW.org and don't look outside of that they would never see how devious this belief or devious this policy is or disassociation and disfellowshipping. They will never see that this policy really is trying to keep the faithful members from knowing what the governing body is really doing. Prevent them from knowing or seeing the skeletons in their closet. Thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Like, subscribe, share this video. Because remember, mind control is a serious thing. It destroys lives when you're under someone else's mind control. And we have seen that with Jehovah's Witnesses.